If you have people coming to your website to view your content and you don't have a way of converting those visitors into email subscribers, you are leaving money on the table. One of the best ways to grow your email subscriber list is to simply have a way for them to opt in to get something from you whenever, you know, when they're viewing your content on your website. Like if they're already there, you've already done the work to generate the traffic, why not have a simple way to convert them to email subscribers? In this video, you'll learn how to automatically embed opt-in forms within your content. And I really like this method because you don't have to worry about having to find the right opt-in or to place an opt-in every into every single piece of content that you create. It's just dropped in automatically. So let's have a quick look at a blog post here. This is one on my Jimmy Rose site. You'll see if we scroll down a few paragraphs, we've got this really simple opt-in here. So while people are reading, they see this one to get more productive, automate your business. Uh, and then there's a link here to uh, opt in to my newsletter and get a guide. And you'll also find it further down the post as well. It gets automatically inserted in a couple of places. There it is here. So this is a very natural style of pop-up, so it doesn't really stand out and that is intentional, but your opt-in does not have to be the same. This will work with any kind of content. In fact, the tool that you're going to learn about today uh, was originally designed to insert ads into blog posts, but uh, you can use it for pretty much anything. Any kind of content can be automatically inserted into all of your posts uh, and there's a whole bunch of cool settings that I think make it a really awesome plugin. If you'd like to learn about more cool tools to grow your business or to become more productive or how to automate your business, that's what I'm all about on this channel. So hit that red subscribe button below if you'd like to learn more about any of those. But let's dig into the tool. So quickly, let's just have a look at that opt-in again. Uh, this is really just simple HTML here, and this link is opening a ConvertBox pop-up. Uh, if you're interested in what ConvertBox is, that is my favorite lead generation tool. Um, I will link to my ConvertBox review in the description below. It'll also be showing as a card on the screen now if you're viewing this on YouTube. Uh, but this does not have to look like this, right? So here's another example uh, at our contentsnare.com website. We've got a full form. This doesn't look great, but it's an example of the kind of opt-in you can embed. See how we've got the actual form here rather than uh, just a link to pop it up. So you can insert literally any content. In this video, I'm not going to show you how to create the actual opt-in itself. Generally, something like this is going to come from your designer or developer. So this is what the actual HTML looks like, uh, which you'll see how this gets inserted shortly. But you know, if you know HTML, you can build something like this. But if you're not a developer, you may also get this from whatever CRM or opt-in tool you're using. For example, the one you see here uh, in on the Content Snare website, if we go to ConvertBox, which is the opt-in tool that I'm using, this is the opt-in here, right? So I've gone and built this in, in ConvertBox, and then I've said, okay, I wanna display this on blog posts, and this is the actual code to embed that opt-in in the blog post, right? That's the only bit of uh, code that I need to copy in. Similarly, if you are using a CRM, like active campaign. So I've built a really basic form here in active campaign, you know, whatever CRM you're using will likely have some kind of form builder. Uh, so when we go to integrate this, it will give us uh, some embed code, right? So there's a simple embed here or the full embed. Either of these are the thing you're going to be inserting into the blog post. So that's why I'm not gonna show you how to actually create one. You're gonna to have to get it out of whatever tool you're using. And this method will work with basically any tool. As long as it's giving you some kind of HTML like this or an embeddable form, then it's going to work with the add insert a plugin. So on that note, let's actually have a look at the plugin you're looking for. This is the one you're looking for uh, over on the WordPress plugin repository. It's called Add Inserter. You can see the URL there, which I will paste into the description below if you wanna uh, find this plugin. But you can also just log into WordPress on the back end of your website, go to uh, plugins, search for Add Inserter and install it. I'm sure you know how to do that. I am not going to go into how to install a plugin in this video, but once it's installed, you come down to settings here and go to add inserter and this is the page you will end up at. Now, one word of warning is that this 
plugin can do a lot of things. There are so many options and they've crammed it all into one screen. So the UI is a bit cramped and it's pretty difficult to work with, but I'll go through some of my favorite settings in this video to save you a bit of the effort of trying to find all of these things. So starting with the tabs across the top here, these are just blocks of content. They're essentially what they consider ads, right? So in this case, there is that HTML for the opt-in that I was uh, talking about earlier, the same as the one from the notepad. So this is the same spot you would copy in this code uh, from ConvertBox or this code from ActiveCampaign. You would drop it straight in here. And the tabs across the top are different ads. So we've got one here, I've actually got the same ad, but it's being inserted further down the page. I showed you that earlier. We've got one at the start, one at the end, and you can go across to 16 different ads that you're inserting. Bear in mind, every time I say ad, that doesn't have to be an actual ad. That could be a form or other piece of content. Just whatever you are going to insert into the post is what I am calling an ad because this plugin is called Ad Inserter. Now jumping back to the first one here, we scroll down and we can see that the settings for this are to automatically insert uh, after paragraph six on posts, only WordPress posts. And I've got a rule here that says, do not display this ad. That's what the cross here means. So don't display uh, this content uh, if the tag no ads is present on the post. So I can simply tag any posts that I write, maybe I don't wanna put uh, an opt-in on that particular one, I write no ads as a tag and it will not show this particular ad. So if we go over to the second ad here, so the, the content is exactly the same. Uh, all I'm doing now is saying, we're going to insert this before paragraph 50. That probably should have the same rule to say don't display if there are no ads. So I've clearly forgotten to do that. But that is a really basic setup, just saying insert this ad after paragraph six and after paragraph 50. All right, so now let's go and create a new ad so you can see how to create this from scratch. So I might jump over and grab that really basic uh, embed code there from ActiveCampaign. So I'm just gonna copy that and go back to here and paste it into block three. Scrolling down, we want to display this on all of our posts. You know, we could select some other things here if we want to display it on the home page or anything, but I think for most use cases, post is probably going to be what you want. So we change the insertion here, the automatic insertion from disabled, and then we've got all these different options, right? So we can say the simple one that I had before was after paragraph. So we just say after paragraph number six, for example, you know, that was the, the first one. We can also put in negative numbers here. So if we say after paragraph negative one, uh, or bef sorry, before paragraph negative one, that actually counts from the bottom of the post. So it's gonna say before the very last paragraph on the page. And I'll just quickly show you the documentation here. There are some other cool things you can do with paragraphs. So you can actually use something like 0 0.3. So if you put in a number between zero and one, it'll actually say that means uh, insert at 30% from the top. So you could also say negative 0.3 to go 30% from the bottom. Um, and then you can do uh, zero for random position uh, and something like percent if you wanna do it every 20 paragraphs or something, so percent 20. So there are some pretty cool uh, options, even just hidden behind that one number setting. And you can see we've got other options there, like we can say after the fifth image in the post, uh, before or after an excerpt. So between posts, if you wanna display this on your blog index page, there are a few other options there, which I'll let you go through. But I think for the most part, you're probably going to do this uh, based on paragraphs. So I'm gonna go before paragraph, uh, the very last one on the page. And we can then open up some more of the advanced options around paragraphs. So if you click this button here, and this is where things can get a little bit complex, but I'll just show you what uh, what it can do. They've done a pretty good job of just like reading it here. So like count from the top paragraphs with tags. If you know about HTML tags, you can use this kind of thing. Uh, but there are some more simple ones here, right? So saying minimum number of words in the paragraphs above. So maybe you've only got some really small paragraphs and you only want to count after five paragraphs that have at least 30 words in them or something like that. And if you have really small posts with only a few paragraphs, you might not want to put an opt-in on that page. So you can say the post must have 
between say 10 and 50 paragraphs maybe is the only time you want to insert. So read through this and you can have a look at the different options there. But I just wanted to highlight the fact that you do have a lot of control over whether the opt-in form will get inserted or not. So I'll close that one. Uh, and I'm gonna open this one, which is called clearance settings. And this is actually one of my favorite settings for one really important reason. And that is, if you're like me, you might have special opt-ins for certain blog posts. So I have uh, that post here, the web design questionnaire post, where we have a, an opt-in here, which is specifically a web design questionnaire opt-in. I'm only going to display this on this particular post. The thing is, I don't want to automatically insert a different opt-in on this post, right? We would end up with two very different opt-ins, but we want people to opt into this very specific lead magnet on this post. So this setting allows you to say, if we find a certain piece of content anywhere else in the post, then don't show that opt-in. So if you notice back over here at ConvertBox, we have the embed code here and it has this C box dash at the front of it. And in fact, it does this for all the different types of opt-ins uh, with ConvertBox. So if I copy that and jump back over to the settings here and say, uh, we're gonna avoid that piece of text and the maximum number you can go here is 999. So that's basically going to say, if in a thousand paragraphs before or after where we're trying to insert the ad, if we find this, we do not put this uh, ad or opt-in into the post. So that is essentially going to say, if we find the fact that we've already put some HTML, so if we've copied one of these things into the post, it's not going to insert our one automatically. In other words, we won't be doubling up by automatically inserting one into a post that already has an opt-in in it. Likewise with our one from Active Campaign, so this is the code we've put in here. So something that's probably going to be in all of the forms is part of that uh, Active Campaign URL. So if we just put Active Hosted directly in there and there, that would say if we've already manually put in a form somewhere else, uh, then don't display our opt-in form. There are a couple of other cool things there too. So we had the option there to do not insert. You actually can try to shift it. So what you might want to do, maybe you do want to insert more than one ad. You can just say, if we find active hosted uh, within say five paragraphs, uh, then we actually just try to shift it down by 10. So it's not too close to the existing one. Again, so many cool options in this plugin. Now just a few more cool settings we'll run through. Um, I'm gonna go over here to lists. And this is where you define uh, basically categories and tags where you do or do not wanna display your forms, your opt-in forms or ads. So this is basically saying we do wanna display it on certain tags or you have to turn that to an X like we had before. So if we had that no ads one, that's how you would turn it off. But let's say we had a certain category you wanted to display it on like marketing, uh, you could turn that to a tick and change this to marketing. Um, that's just completely up to you. There's lots of different uh, options there. Uh, I pretty much only use tags for these. So um, I'm just going to leave it as that. Now you notice when you click these buttons here, the settings appear and disappear. So you can turn multiple settings on at a time. That's why I'm gonna hide that one um, and that one, and then actually we'll get rid of that paragraph clearance settings as well. And then I'm gonna switch over to manual. So this is an option for you if you want to be able to insert this opt-in form using a short code, uh, you can create that and then um, tick this box and then you can actually insert that ad anywhere in your site uh, with that short code. So the benefit of that then is if you might wanna change that form later, all you have to do is come to this one place, update the script here, and it's gonna update anywhere you've used that short code in your website. Um, hiding that one, we can actually choose to hide or show ads based on what devices, you know, like mobile, desktop, that kind of thing. Uh, pretty simple stuff there. And under MISC, uh, there is a pretty cool option here. There's a lot, there's quite a few different tabs here, but the main one I wanted to show you is word count. So we could say, you know, on short posts, we don't want to display any ads at all. So you could say, uh, you know, there's a minimum word count. So that can be pretty handy as well. Um, but like I said, there are a few other tabs here, but most of these are getting pretty advanced and there probably aren't a lot of use cases for these specifically with opt-in forms, but feel free to have a look uh, through those yourself. When we're done, I'm just going to double check I've got all the settings that I want. So if I hide MISC, 
look at my clearance settings again. I might just delete these because we don't need them for this use case. I really just care about um, inserting before the last paragraph in the post. So I'm going to save settings. I'm going to jump back to my post and hit reload. If we scroll down, we should find that active campaign form before the very last paragraph. Scroll back up and there we go. So that has automatically inserted that form into my post. And actually you'll find it's on all my posts. So if I go to the blog now and have a look at my latest post here, scroll all the way down to the bottom, there it is. So it's automatically inserting that opt-in form into all of my posts, except where those conditions are true. So maybe let's go back over to here. And if I change the clearance settings to say, you know, if we find the word tutorial anywhere before uh, 999 paragraphs uh, before the ad is trying to insert, we save the settings. Um, this post does not mention the word tutorial anywhere. So it should, yep, it's still there. I've reloaded and the ad is still there. This one does mention obviously the word tutorial there. So if we go down, it should be gone, which it is. So you can see that is a pretty powerful little feature. That's it for this video. I hope you have taken something away from this. I find this plugin and little strategy of automatically inserting opt-ins super handy for uh, my personal blog and our business site uh, because it means I don't have to think about creating an opt-in for every single page. If we have one that's a really good uh, lead magnet or opt-in for anyone that comes to the site, they're automatically inserted unless it finds an existing opt-in form or if we tag it with no ads. So we have full control over when those display, uh, but then I also don't have to think about it uh, if I do want them to display. So it means every uh, piece of content then has some kind of opt-in, uh, which is super handy and helps us grow our email subscriber list. If you would like to learn more cool tools like this or about ways to become more productive or how to automate your business, again, that's what I'm all about on this channel. So hit that red subscribe button below and I will see you in the next video.